Hello, and thank you, everyone. My name is Brendan Gates, and I am a member of the board of Earth First Organization. We are a le legitimate organization and research group who are focused on improving environmental health and improving the human condition. I'm here with my research group, and we here at Earth First <coughs> are very aware and very concerned about the increasing demand in energy and our ever-increasing dependence on fossil fuels, oil and coal, as well as the increase in municipal waste generation and the effects that is having on our landfills. <coughs> we here today have come to present our research of a solution to both of these problems, that being of waste to energy plants. And with that, I would like to turn the time over to, <coughs> to Amber, so, waste to energy plants are currently being used in, in many, many areas of the world. However, only a very small percentage of those countries are using them for a large portion of their energy. Um, for example, Sweden is using it for 20% of their total energy for the country, and they're importing it and are making a profit for importing it and using it. However, that is not the case in many, in most of the world. So we have created several models um, to help other countries reach and use their reach this potential and use in waste for large portions of their energy, and they could be used in large countries such as the United States, who have large amounts of energy, um, energy potential with their trash. Um, and so we've created two models for different uses. Yes. So we here that are, are trying to develop this waste energy power plant, one of the biggest obstacles that we face is how the trash varies as it comes in. When you run a coal plant, you just have coal coming in, and you don't expect high variances in the heating value of your feed. But with trash, we see trash change every day between plastics and wood and paper pulp and anything you can expect. So we had to come up with a way to, to tune a controller to be able to predict all these changes. And so using the help of Dr. John Heading Green, we uh, were able to, to use one of his controller models and modify our heating value to just a very random range so that we could make a controller react and change based on how this heating value is changing. So we this this model depends on the energy balance that is similar to what is used in a coal plant or any other kind of combustion plant. And the results that we have are on the next slide. And we we try to to modify and tune these controllers for two different scenarios. One being if we were to just use our waste energy plant as a base load energy source and rely also on supplementary energy. So that would be a disturbance reduction type of scenario where we're just uh, controlling and trying to maintain at a certain set point. But also we looked at the possibility of using our waste energy plant as a, a servo control and being able to track and meet the energy demand all day and to fill in all those gaps. So we, we calculated a set of values which are displayed there. We, these are just the tuning constants that would be used in a basic PID controller. And they were quite effective. We were able to show um, that these things could work well. And Sarah will talk more about that. So as we've done our modeling, we've been able to determine that our control system is an effective control system. It it reacts well to changes in set point or changes in heat, and combu heat of combustion. Sometimes there's a little bit of overshoot or a little bit of offset, but it's okay to have a little bit too much energy produced. So some of the assumptions that we've made with this is that if we have a constant heat, constant temperature output, then we'll have a constant heat output. And also that we have no moisture content, that it ha the trash has been dried beforehand. So with those assumptions, it wasn't a perfect model based on those, but we do recommend it anyway. So in the future, in order to make it 
a better model, what we would recommend before implementation in a plant is that that a better heating value correlation would be determined, that we would account for the moisture content and that possibility of that changing, and also add a contingency for damaging waste, such as aerosol cans. When they heat it up, they can explode. And so we just want to be careful with that. And also metals can also be corrosive in some furnaces and incinerators. So we just want to account for those things. With those changes, we definitely recommend the implementation of this control model into a waste energy plant.